This is Ira Krakow. The name of this video is Blender 2.62 Add-ons Part 1. Add-ons are just what the name implies. Programs that extend or add to the functionality of Blender. They're not part of the core Blender program. Instead, you can turn them on or off, enable or disable them, by clicking a checkbox in the User Preferences screen. There are many add-ons which can add more capability to your Blender environment. To see the add-ons, from the default Blender screen, I will change the 3D view window type to User Preferences. A tab menu displays with different types of preferences grouped into categories such as Interface, Input, Add-ons, and so on. Interface displays by default. To see the add-ons available, click the Add-ons tab. Some add-ons ship with Blender and are enabled by default. These are the official add-ons that Blender intends to maintain and perhaps enhance in future versions. Each add-on menu item represents an add-on program. Let's look at the Autodesk 3DS format entry. In addition to its name, we can see that it belongs to the Import-Export group. The little Blender icon towards the right of the entry indicates that this is a Blender-supported add-on. The fact that the checkbox is on the right side of the entry is checked indicates that the program is enabled. If you click on the arrow on the left side of the entry, the entry expands to show the description, location in the Blender interface, author or authors, and a link to the wiki page which has the documentation for the add-on. Clicking on the link takes us, in this case, to the wiki Python extensions wiki at blender.org. Currently there's no additional information about this particular add-on. All except one add-on that's official is part of the import-export group which allows us to import or export the blend file to or from 3DS, BioVision, STL, SVG and other formats. The one exception is the Cycles Render Engine. This has gotten a lot of buzz as a replacement for the Blender internal renderer. Let's expand the arrow on the left and follow the link to the Blender Wiki. You can read about the current state of Cycles and, if you wish, contribute to Cycles through the Wiki. Cycles is enabled as an add-on by default. However, the default renderer is the Blender internal renderer. To render in Cycles instead, click on the drop-down which contains the render engine Blender is using. There are three available renderers, Blender internal, Game Engine, and Cycles and choose Cycles. I will switch back to the 3D view and press F12 to render the scene. This is how the default scene is rendered in Cycles. There's obviously a lot more to Cycles than this. I'll talk about Cycles in other tutorials and I'll return the window back to the 3D view. Returning to the user preferences, I'll click on the Community button. Community supported add-ons are not officially supported by Blender but rather are contributed by the talented worldwide community of Blender enthusiasts and supported through the wiki page of the particular add-on. Obviously one tutorial can't cover all of them. Some have general use and others are kind of specialized. I'd like to demonstrate some of my favorites. The dynamic spacebar key, the screencast keys, the landscape, bolt factory, and pipe joints mesh add-ons. Let's start with the dynamic spacebar add-on. In Blender 2.4x and earlier versions, pressing the spacebar brought up a menu of objects to add to your scene. In 2.5x and beyond, and in 2.62 as well, the spacebar is the search function. Many of you might be used to the old way the spacebar worked. Enabling the dynamic spacebar lets you have the best of both worlds. Actually, as you'll see, it's better than either world. You can either have the old 2.4 menu options, or you can search, or you can do many other things. I will enable the dynamic spacebar add-on simply by checking the checkbox. Then I will change the window to 3D and press the spacebar. You can search, add an object as you did in 2.4x and before, or do many other things such as transform, mirror, snap cursor, parent, and so on. You can almost do everything just from this menu. Neat! I'll return to the user preferences screen. My particular favorite since I do Blender tutorials is the screencast keys add-on. Its purpose is simple. It displays what keys are pressed or which mouse button is clicked on the screen. I'll enable it by checking its checkbox. 
Now I'll return to the 3D view. Pressing the N key in the 3D viewport brings up the properties region for the 3D view. I will scroll down to the screencast keys panel and click the start display button. There are settings for controlling various display properties of the screencast keys. I'll accept the defaults. Now I'll do some things with the cube that involve keyboard and mouse actions. In the lower left part of the 3D view, these actions are displayed. This is great for tutorials. I'll return to the user preferences screen. The last group of add-ons I'll show are the add mesh group. They allow you to add a landscape, nuts and bolts, and pipe joints as meshes to your scene. I'll check these add-ons. Now I'll go back to the 3D view and add a landscape, a bolt, and a pipe joint. They're actually factories, controllable with options that let you control exactly what type of each you'd like to create. This can save you a lot of modeling time. To save all of these, you can click the Save as Default button on the User Preferences menu. This has the side effect of placing you in the User Preferences menu every time you start Blender or create a new file. If you press Control u on the 3D view, on the other hand, you'll start in that view instead. Add-ons provide a great platform for creating your own custom Blender environment and are a fantastic way to tap into the creativity of the Blender community. I hope this tutorial has given you the start to explore all the add-ons available as well as to install others on the web. Happy blendering!